say I use stainless steel. Does this affect? This this is the Bokuri. Bokuriya. Wow. Many years ago, I had something like this that went up the, up the end of my um, yeah manhood. We'll, we'll do our own coronavirus test right here. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> is that painful? No, no, I want too many drugs. I'm negative, I'm negative. There we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fork in hell. That's what I'm going to use. <laughs> the fork in hell on my beluga. We're here in Korea and we've got Salina here and me. And we're going to talk about... You look like you could be Korean. You could be Korean. Are you Korean? Are you really? Korean? Korean? Oh, all right. Oh, you got, you got it right. So, guys, we have some uh, beans. There we go. Kimchi. Kimchi. I don't think that's for me today. I'm not sure what this is. I think this is mango. Not bad. No? Okay. I'm not sure what it tastes like. Ah, cardboard box. <laughs> <laughs> Green beans. Oh, there we go. I'm moving the kimchi, guys. You don't like kimchi? Uh, no. Uh, it's good for your health. Filipinos love it. Yeah. It's good for your health. Uh, mainly because uh, it's marinated vegetables. It's got all of those antitoxins and um, so, purifies your blood and your. Uh, it's a marinated cabbage. I think cabbage. Uh, yeah, it's cabbage, cabbage, and it's also got. Uh, there's a paste, you mix it with a paste and it ferments, and right, after right. fermentation you can actually eat it. So, yeah, I'll get my Coca-Cola over there, it's coming up. So, so today we're just going to chat, and we were talking earlier today about keeping a low profile in the Philippines, and things that have happened to me, and things that have happened to Salina on my channel, don't I? Davao, the safest city in the world. Yeah, but, you, so. but as you turn around and said, that's related to the crime. Yes. It's not related to the innuendo or the... Uh, well, it's not related to the... You know, here's the way I look at it, right? Basically, you can classify uh, safety or uh, your life what happens in the three categories. You can have public, private, and random. Okay. Those are the three, my three categories. Now, of course, public would be what happens in the news, yeah. what, happens, what happens out there that people know about, talk about, and that would be general safety. And that includes crime, right? Because okay, yeah. crime is kind of a public event. I mean, we mentioned the other day about some off-duty policeman shooting. Oh, Tarlac. Yeah. He incident in Tarlac. And it was all over the news. Yeah. And they even showed the video of the guy shooting this woman and her son. And there was, yeah, there was comments like, oh, my... My, my husband is a police officer or something, or my relative is a police officer, and the guy turned around and pulled the trigger yeah. and put a hole in her head yeah. and a hole in her son's head. These so. are public things, and in fact, uh, and this is, relates to foreigners too. There was a guy uh, in Bacolod City a few months back. Uh, apparently, he, in fact, a couple of experts did videos about it. Uh, he lived in a nice house, 
right. and a nice subdivision. And somebody broke in in the middle of the night and killed it. Right. There was never uh, never any explanation from the police. Was it was it uh, a botched robbery? Was no. was it a planned execution? Was who knows? Nobody right. seems to know, right? But that's public. That happens out in the public. Uh, so, and you can find things like that that happened at that. This guy on Behold, last year, I believe, about a year ago, was out, an American, older, retired American, was out jogging and he was killed, executed by a couple guys on a bike out on a back road somewhere. Oh, he was jogging. That was a guy that was having a boundary issue on his plot of land or something. Apparently. And he got a, he got a little bit abusive, and then somebody bought his life. Yeah, that's what they call it. You buy somebody's life, and it can be done very cheaply. Yeah, but that became public, right? These events are out there in the news. Stuff like this happens. You and I talked earlier about uh, the guy, the, Brit the British guy, over on Dapitan, Dapitan, Dapitan. Yeah. Yeah. He. Uh, this was, what, a year, year and a half ago. Him and his wife ran a school, private school. Right, yeah. And he got kidnapped. Him and his wife got kidnapped. Uh, later to be rescued by the military. Yes. Now, this was also out in the public, right? A big news story. Foreigner gets kidnapped. Yeah. Held for ransom. But... So you saw it in the news. Uh, was why was he kidnapped? Was it just the ransom for money? Who was it? Uh, so who did it? They said it was terrorists, right? Just doing it. But I, I read, I read some troll comments uh, from a Filipino that said, no, this was pre-planned. And it had to do with something with the school. Somebody was uh, kicked out of the school or denied entry. Entry. Oh, okay. Something along those lines. It was retaliatory. That was. This was just talk. Was that? The, I don't know. But anyways, these are all public events that happen. What do you want to talk about? That's the first category, public. Yeah. You and I are going to talk about the second yeah. and the third, which is the second is personal, mm -hmm. which doesn't get in the news, which uh, happened to us yeah. or somebody near by, close by, or we heard about privately. Yeah. Well, I. Or oh, and the third, which is random, I mean, things that just happen out of the blue. Yeah. With you don't know exactly why. Yeah. Or just who, random events. Who did it? And it's just it's just one of those things that that happened here in the Philippines. Yeah. So a bit like me when I came here a few years ago, uh, I met a girl and. I took her out for a couple of dates and then one night I was at my hotel and my phone went and up came a message and I'd just been out for dinner with this girl and the message read uh, don't hurt her otherwise and then there was a picture of a gun in the text I have nobody gave my telephone I don't give my telephone number to anyone so somebody had actually found my telephone number and they'd actually sent me a text message. Yeah, it could be from somebody else. Yeah, it could be. It could be just somebody sending text messages out. However, two days later, when I was out with the young lady, she turned around and she said that, uh, oh, I might get some messages on my phone because her ex-boyfriend uh, was really, really angry that she was going out with a foreigner, me. And her father had to turn around and get involved and uh, stop him 
from becoming really aggressive two days ago, which coincided with my text message. Um, I was fortunate because I came back to London and the relationship didn't go on any further. <laughs> good thing, probably a good thing for yeah. you. But I, it's those things like that that sit in the, in the back of your mind that when you do come back into the lines, you make sure you tread carefully. Yes, and I, I had something similar happen to me about two years ago when I first started dating um, my current girlfriend, right? What? I think after, first, after the first or second date, I don't remember which, I too got a text message on my phone. And I don't give my number out either, right. like you. And this, this was a threatening text message. Uh, something to the effect of, I know who you are, you shouldn't, you got to stop seeing or dating my, uh, the girl you're with. Uh, I know people in the police department, I can have you arrested. Uh, I know people at VI, I can have you deported. I also have some friends that may want to pay you a visit. I know where you live. You know, it's a threatening message. So these are things that happen behind the scenes. Yes. The, I'm not in the public domain, but they're pretty scary, guys. Uh, they're pretty um, intimidating. You know, you want to, uh, there's a lot of this in the media, foreigners want to come to the Philippines to find a Filipina, have a nice relationship, have a nice, however, you have a nice relationship, have an enjoyable time here. But there are people that muddy the water, and there are, have people, been people in the past. And some people don't like foreigners dating Filipinos. Uh, does it happen in other countries? I think it does. But here it's a little bit, it's a little bit intimidating. Well, uh, here it's... Uh it comes out of the blue too, right? Yeah. You're not expecting that. Plus, the first, you know, when I got that message, the first person I contacted was the girl I was dating, right? Right. And I said, this has to be your ex-boyfriend. Right. I mean, who else? Would, would be concerned about who I'm going to date or who I am dating. I, so in other words, I'm thinking logic. Here in the Philippines, you have to be prepared to, to think illogic. Right. That it could... Well, it's not that. necessarily somebody that you logically think it is. It could be just some random guy who doesn't like you or saw you with the girl yeah. and doesn't like you as a foreigner dating a Filipino girl. Yeah, I, I do it the other way. I don't actually talk to anybody about it. I just keep it to myself and let it and let it play out. It's, it's that natural course because I don't want to stir up anything. I don't want to put it on anybody's radar. I just leave it below the radar if somebody mentions it, then I just around and say, oh, yeah, okay, I'm not doing anything about it. Right. But it goes back to the category, right? Yeah. Personal. These are things that happen personally. And you, <clears throat> if you're here, you have to be aware that this these kind of things can and will happen on a personal level. Right? It's not all palm trees, sandy beaches and blue water. <laughs> no. There, there are a few uh, there are a few things that you have to turn around and uh, be aware of. You know for me on a personal scale it was like as I was saying to you about 
Oh, glad I already for her. I was down in the leaks up. I wanted to do a vlog on the school. Now, Mark Clark, not a name, works in the mountains as a teacher. And I turned around and said, Oh, can, we, can I come up there to your school and actually see the children and see how you do? Because it's, it's something that happens in Philippine life. And it's off the beaten track of doing something basic that about it. So I mentioned it, and then the following day, we well, were having breakfast, and Annie, Annie raised it with me. Uh, they weren't happy, her family weren't happy that I wanted to go up into the mountains. So I asked the question, they said, it's not safe. I was like, I said, it's not the children, it's the other people that are in that community, in the mountains around Melita, see me and might borrow me or kidnap me or take me away. So I never got to the the school. I would like to. But that, uh, it's one of those things you don't see in the tourist program. But do, uh, do you think that has more to do with location? Meaning, <laughs> it's remote. You're up in the mountains in a remote area. We talked about this previously, which is, and I'll mention what something that happened to me. Um, the NPA, this terrorist, right. Muslim affiliated, which Mindanao has become rather infamous for, yep. right? Yeah. We could mention Marawi. Everybody knows what happened in Marawi. But the NBA, the terrorism, these guys are hiding because they don't want to be found. And where would you hide in the Philippines? You hide out in the mountains or you hide out in the jungle somewhere, in remote places right. where the army isn't going to find you. Or at least the army has to come and hunt you down if they want to find you. So, I think location is one of those aspects. That makes me uh, makes me leery, or I would question these guys that want to come here, foreigners. And I'm sure it has to do with their girl, their wife, right? Are they living there? They live out in these remote areas farm somewhere. Remember I mentioned I watched the guys. Very small town. Uh, he did a video. He's, he's got a lot of videos about living on a farm, right. his wife's land, building a house on the farm. It's out in some remote area in the Kidnap province. Would I live out there like him? No. I would not. I feel perfectly fine here in Davao City. And my advice, just my personal advice, stick to the city. Uh, these guys that live out in these remote farms, they like it. They think it's nice, quiet, peaceful life. Yeah. Until somebody comes knocking on the door. And this guy in in one of his videos pointed out that he had 20 over 20 acres of land but the more remote area of the land he was advised not to go there and not to he wanted to grow rice rice beer. right the locals told him don't do it it's your land is a little too remote and there's uh, been people with guns spotted 
around your land. Oh. It didn't seem to concern him too much. <laughs> you know, it sure as hell would concern me. You know, but uh, that just goes to show you the risk you're taking by being out in some isolated, remote area. Even though it's nice and peaceful and quiet and out yeah. in nature and all that, uh, it can be unsafe. I think you're right. I think there are places, when I rode around the Philippines, you look at it and you go, I'm not going to go that route because one, there are no lights on the road. Two, there's no traffic. Three, it's really, really off the beaten track. And you don't know who you're gonna meet. Yeah. But yet these guys will do video vlogs. We've talked about the guy down, uh, with the beard, the American guy that's on a farm out in the Oh, yeah. Um, Coronadol, he's up north of Coronadol. Yeah, he's a friend of uh, Philippine on demand. So, yeah, he lives in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, he's got a farm, same thing with his girl. Yeah. He seems happy, he likes farming. Yeah. Uh, Doing his vlogs. Does his vlogs. Uh, would I do what he's doing? No. I wouldn't. Would I live where he lives? No, I sure wouldn't. But hey, you know, it rocks his boat. Yeah, it's what he likes to do. And again, I relate this back to the girls, the Filipino girls. Most of these guys, these guys are doing this because of their girl. The girl owns, family owns the land. Something like that, right? So that's why they're out there. Yeah, we come, I'll come here and stay with you, but I'll look after the land, I will help, and I will give some money. Let me build a house, uh, etc., etc. I, yeah, as you say, I think there are, there are, you know, I've had a couple of instances where I've been out in a higher car. And I've come back from doing the market or looking around the town, and the last time the car was actually penned in by a truck and a van on the, on the road in Gen 10. Uh, it became it a, six, a six hour ordeal because this is a normal main road and behind this red car I died was a truck and it was about one centimetre from the back of the car, so I couldn't open the back of the car. And when I went to the front, the van in the front was exactly the same, half so close. You couldn't actually, you could only go backwards and forwards like half a centimetre. You couldn't, you turn the steering wheel, you couldn't go anywhere. Uh, and that was like that for six hours. I actually had to get the hire car company to come from Davao to Jensen to push the van out of the way. So the van actually had three car parking spaces behind it, but it was so close to me. Uh, and I don't. So this was uh, this was done intentionally. Well, let's put it this way, the car hire company said to me, who did I upset? That was his first words. Who did I upset? I said, what do you mean? He said, well, nobody parks like that if, you, if you've not upset me. So, yeah, I'd upset somebody. And you think, who do I know in Jet Set? Nobody. How, the reason or how you upset them was what? Because you're a foreigner? Probably, right? Maybe. I, I spent six hours trying to move the car in the back, the truck in the back. I couldn't push it. Maybe I could just got the hire car and ran the two cars out of the way. <laughs> then I'd have had to pay for the hire car. Right. Well, 
I had something happen out in uh, Davao Oriental. Huh? Right? A year and a half or so ago. Maybe two. I was visiting somebody and they suggested uh, this wasn't far from Mati, which is actually a very popular tourist location. Yeah. Now, I'll actually name the town. It was Laban. It was suggested, let's go to the night market. Okay. A lot of night markets. Even in Dava has a night market. Right? Yeah. And they're all the same, right? Selling knickknacks and different things. Food. Food. The grilling. And actually the food's usually pretty good. Grilled chicken, grilled pork, things like that. So we did. And we drove there in my car. You know. uh, parking near the market was kind of difficult. We drove by the market up next to it, couldn't find a spot to park. Finally ended up parking uh, next to a construction area that was closed down. And so we went to the market, we did our thing, we had food, came back an hour and a half or so later. Uh, my tire was slashed. Oh, yeah, very obviously slashed by a good sized knife. Why was it slashed? Who slashed it? I don't know. Yeah. But I do know later, the next day, when I was back in Dallas and I went to my local uh, mechanic to have a repair, get a new tire, his wife said to me, Because I, I mentioned to her, I said, same thing. Why would somebody do this? Did they not like me personally? Did it, was it because I was a white, you know, probably the only white foreigner at this market? She said, NDA. <laughs> I said, NDA? Terrorist people? Yeah. They're hiding out there in the jungle in Dava Oriental. I said, you're kidding me. She said, no, I'm serious. Of course, I later mentioned this to the person I visited. They said, oh, that's ridiculous. There's no NPA in Dava Oriental. No uh, terrorists here. But <clears throat> they don't know that for sure. The NPA doesn't want to be found. Wherever they are, you only know they're there when they make them, they decide to do something or make an appearance. So I guess it's a possibility. Yeah, I, I, think, it, I think it is. I mean, I did a vlog on uh, Lacson over by Kalina, yeah. where I, I was riding around by the river and uh, I was going through a couple of. Uh, a couple of small barangays over there. I came back, I did, I posted the video. You can see it on this channel. And one of my subscribers turned around and said that uh, the week before I was uh, did my video, two or three MPA were caught and shot two kilometres from where I was filming my video. And that wasn't public, that was behind the scenes. And I was like, you're up, you're up. and I just spoke to this guy at length on my on my channel, and he was surrounded. So yeah, they were wanted for a crime over near Kudarat, uh, Kutapato, or over Kirifawan. Uh, something to do with uh, what they were around doing extortion and threatening to get money. And all of a sudden, these these two or three people, one woman, two guys, were cornered, staying in this uh, house of a relative, uh, and they're no more. Well, but that, that probably was a case of uh, 
the Army or PMP yeah. shooting first and asking questions later, right? Yeah. Once you have a big hole in you, you're not going to be running around trying to damage or hurt anybody else. Yeah. So, but yeah, it, it's there. Some, some of it is... Uh, I mean, that, this pro that's probably... And, and maybe the event I described at the night market. Uh, those could probably be random events, right? Yeah, spontaneity or spontaneous yeah, uh, reactions like to I was the wrong per I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And the wrong colour. Or you could have been in the wrong place at the wrong time, right? Well I was in the wrong place at the wrong time riding through, but it wasn't made public that this had actually happened in this area. Right. Otherwise I wouldn't have actually been there. <laughs> <laughs> if it had been on the public webs on the public news so it's kind of a gray area. Is, yeah. it, is it personal or is it random? Yeah. Right? But, point B, these things happen here. They do happen. happen. And it's just another reason to keep as low a profile as you possibly can. Yeah. Right? Don't, as a form. Yeah. Don't advertise. Definitely don't, don't advertise. Don't go out with and even when a you Rolex watch or a gold chain. <laughs> Which yeah. neither of us have. Or gold teeth. Because somebody will turn around and see it as cash. Whether you're holding on to it, doesn't matter. But you don't even necessarily have to have gold chains or Rolex watches. You can just be a bar. As they say here, people are watching. Yeah. Not everybody's watching, but a lot of the people that are watching yeah. watch for a reason. Yeah, I was talking I was talking to Annie a couple of weeks ago about this and turned around about, about this chism is on Facebook. Uh, because you get guys that come out here for the Filipi the women, the Filipinos and they would like but they there is this thing called a player. And it's a word that is in this chismas. And I remember when I first started going out with Annie, uh, she turned around, she put me on probation for two weeks. So around and say, like, make sure that I wasn't a player, make sure I wasn't doing this, make sure I wasn't doing that. And I was <laughs> like, so I went home and I was sat at home and I go, how is she going to work that out? She, said, she works at night, I got all the days to play. Right. Well, it's not, it's because she has friends that are on Facebook yeah. and at these dating sites and they are looking, they are what, and you go to the mall, you can bet your bottom dollar that that girl over there knows somebody that knows yes. your girlfriend. Exactly. And they will then turn around and send a text message to this girl who will send it to her to send it back to you. And you'll come over and you go, oh, darling, how are you? And you go, what are you doing at Gmail today? And you go, Bloody hell, I've only just come through the door. And I've had that happen. And that is it. It's on your doorstep. And you have to deal with it. And your reply says a lot. If you sit there and go... Oh, I wasn't there. What are you talking about? Yeah, because you know, they've got half a dozen pictures of you sitting there. And if you're with a woman... Oh my <laughs> gosh. And you're going to end up... Well, that, that's there was a guy in America about 25 years ago who was cheating on his girlfriend. And she gave him a bath one night and she cut off his bobbin. <laughs> she cut, cut it off. <laughs> Watch out, guys. <laughs> so that that's definitely a person. <coughs> person. But the grapevine here is super efficient. And you never, a lot of times, you don't know. No. It's all happening behind the scenes. You as a dumb foreigner, you don't know all this is going on. No. And there's all this chat and yeah. being spread around and talked about. I mean, ran, I'll give you one last example. Random, definitely a random event, right. but a scary random event. 
which is a while back. I don't know, a year and a half or so, roughly. I took a trip by myself out to uh, the Kidnap. Okay. So I'm driving along and I'm coming up on Kazan, so maybe three, four kilometers out, outside of Kazan City. Okay. Heading um, you know, I'm westbound and down, loaded up and trucking. <laughs> Quote a song. And I come up upon a group, maybe six, eight, ten, of uh, young guys, teenagers, early 20s, on their bikes. And they're all grouped in a, in a group. Okay. And you've seen them, right? Yeah, they're all going to get those little uh, skinny tired motorcycles. Yeah. I think they're going to be the next Formula One Rossi. <laughs> yeah. And they're they're in their group, they're packed, and they're shouting and yelling at each other and all this stuff. And I come up on the back of it, and there's a guy on the back of one of the bikes, a young kid, I don't know, maybe 18, 20, right, a rough okay. guess, and he suddenly whips out a handgun, <laughs> and he's waving this gun and it looked real to me <laughs> you know. you're not going to get close to have a look are you <laughs> is it loaded is he going to use it on me I don't know but I was close enough I could tell it looked to me like a Smith and Wesson model 1911 45 caliber automatic right uh, whatever I, it is he can do some damage yes was he going to use it on me he didn't really look at me, he glanced back, uh, but he, all I noticed or cared about was this guy's got a handgun and he's waving it around like he could very well use it at any moment. Yeah, that's, that's scary, yeah. Very scary. I, <coughs> needless to say, I quickly backed off. Right. I hit the brakes, I slowed way down, I decided, you know what? Let's go the other way. Let, it's better I let these guys get way ahead of me, right? right. So I, I actually got so slow, I was on the side of the road, just creeping along. I decided to give it about five or ten minutes before I proceeded. And I did, eventually I went on. I didn't see this group of guys again, right. but this was a totally random event. Uh, but stuff like this can happen. Yeah. Uh, what's yeah. That, that's what I find. And I, yeah, I come from the UK and there isn't a gun, gun culture in the UK. Police at the airport and some other places will cover it, but normal people don't walk around with guns. You, you know, you can get hold of it. Uh, there's a big knife culture in, uh, in London where people get stabbed, uh, and there's a young cult, there's a culture of youngsters doing that, which isn't clever. Uh, uh, but for, you know, for my informative years growing up, guns were, it was normal fisticuffs, it was normal fighting. We didn't turn around and intimidate and scare or anybody like that. I mean, we had the IRA that was killing loads and loads of people and bombing indiscriminately through London, uh, and that went off. But that, that's similar to here, but you know, I'm a bit like you. I like the countryside. I like being out in the countryside, but I don't tell anybody where I'm going. And when I vlog, Nobody knows where I'm going when I vlog, apart from you. I come here to do vlog with you. I don't turn around and say, tomorrow, I'm going to be doing this in quarterback <coughs> at the town hall. And so, <coughs> back to you have to keep a low profile, yeah. right? And even when you do keep a low profile, random things can happen. That's unique to the film. I mean, I guess you could say, Oh yeah, sure. If I were in the US, or I were in the UK, or in Europe somewhere, a random event like this, or what similar, might happen to you, right? Yeah, okay. It does happen to people. I think the thing is, you, you could... 
there would be a couple of places, I would say there's like one place that comes to mind really quickly where you could be fairly safe, and that would be on the beach. Because <laughs> you couldn't, couldn't see somebody walking along with a pair of board shorts and a Smith & Weston <laughs> hanging out of their board shorts when they've got no shirt or anything. It's when they got long coats, when you were in the high street. This is what I find. I, it's well, 30 degrees and somebody's walking around with a t-shirt and a hoodie on and you're like, oh my god. But see, in the West, most of these, although they seem like random events, they're not really. These guys are looking for victims, right? And you, they pick you, for whatever reason, as a victim. So it's kind of pre-planned, so to speak. They're very rarely spur-of-the-moment crimes. They're, these criminals, they're in it for money, or they're in it for crime of some kind. They want to steal something from you. Yeah. Maybe it's... Ransom. Ra yeah, who knows? But it mostly random events don't happen. Are very rare. Well, here, random stuff can and does happen. Guy waving a gun off the back of a bike, getting your tires slashed in a night market. Yeah, having people park so close to your car that you can't actually drive. You know, this kind of stuff can and does happen here more than people know. But it's not advertised, is it? So when you come here, it's one of those learning curves. A bit like yourself, you say stay in Dallas, I stay in Dallas. Yes. I feel comfortable going around Dallas. And as I said, Dallas is the city in the world. It's the safest city in the world with crime. It is a very safe city. But right. it's not Dallas City, the safest city in the world, but we're not looking at the random and we're not looking at the undisclosed things that don't happen. I.e. like last week, I was saying to Salina, there was a, a car that came in from Tagum, Toyota Vios. I think it's quite amusing because Salina drives a Toyota Vios and it had like a billion pesos worth of uh, shabu in the boot. And the two guys turned around and said, they just asked to drop the car off in Dava. They didn't look at it, they didn't check it, they didn't do anything. But in the back was 20 years worth of uh, jail sentence. <laughs> And that was picked up, and that, that's public, uh, but that's me. And that was in the Manila, the Manila Inquirer I was reading two days ago. So, the bottom line here about what we're talking about, which we've said several times, which is keeping a low profile, uh, applies anywhere in the building. Yes. Uh, we talked about people, the guy on Behold, the American guy out jogging, got shot. Yeah, that's it. The guy in Holid. I believe, yeah. His house was broken into. He well, was shot and killed. He's right, that guy, Mike Kasem, who died last year. He didn't die because of the tourists, he died because of heart condition. Yes. He moved to, from Elo Lilo to Bok. Mac Lloyd to live with his girlfriend yeah. and he rented that big house and that big house was broken into five times. <laughs> he, he'd been there for about six years and he, he hadn't been broken into he in Elo Elo. Uh, after his death he was nicknamed Heart Attack Mike Yeah, because <laughs> he had a heart attack and died. Yeah. And then, it, then his girlfriend videoed his body, his body yeah. uh, being transported to the hospital and dead on the hospital bed. She's <laughs> a bit. Yeah. Right, I'm not going down that route. But, but that Mike Casey, you know, lovely guy. I met him once in Hilo Hilo uh, a long time ago. But he went from Hilo Hilo to Black Lloyd with his girl. He rented a house, but the house, there's a video on it, and he put all of his... Uh, Razor wire on the roof. Yes. They were climbing across the roof, and he just turned around and told this guy, "Put it everywhere." And he woke up one day, two days later or something, after having all the razor wire, and there was somebody in his bedroom, and it wasn't his girlfriend; it was somebody else. <laughs> uh, it happened. It, it's, it yeah. just happens. So, this random events. Uh, is it because you're a foreigner? Well, 
sometimes. Yeah, I think not always. No. Uh, but as a foreigner, uh, you have to be aware that this stuff happens. Yeah, and it could be because you're a foreigner, and you which got... it makes it double the reason you have to keep your profile it's very low. Well. Yeah, because the assumption is that a foreigner has a cash register on their head. Yes, they're rich. So I can get easy money. Yes, and that's how I that's how I view it. And I said, I, as I said to you, I don't advertise where I'm going to go and vlog. I turn up, I do the vlog, and then I get out from wherever I'm going to go fairly quickly. If I'm going to do a vlog riding on a riding around on a tricycle or something, then I will turn around and do a vlog on a tricycle. So. Um, yeah. Can you hear that? The Filipinos are getting louder and louder and louder and louder. And well, they get excited. We've been going almost an hour. Yeah. So, so we're, just, uh, we're just covering off this topic, really, and it's a chat today. Kind of Before a... Before Rizzle Day. Kind of a, a break from the virus news. Yeah. The doom and gloom of having an injection yeah. stuck in your arm. I mean, and that's it July. It gets kind of sad after a while. Well, it's like you were joking the other day about the Brits having uh, mutated. Yes. I've become a ninja turtle overnight. <laughs> I'm going to have pointy ears. But yeah, so in the UK, they banned flights going into the UK and out of the UK until March. Uh, they're going to take the Injections, but Japan is locked down as well now until yeah. the end of January. That's true. So they closed the door because five people from the UK travelled on the plane with COVID, the mutated form. Um, you know, it's funny so how do you, do you catch the within a, a short span of what week roughly? Yeah. How every country in the world has suddenly become. Scared to death of the mutated virus in yeah. the UK. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's still the coronavirus. If it's yeah. mutated or not, it's the same thing. Yeah. And even the vaccine makers have said, as far as we know, the vaccine's going to work yeah. on the mutated. So why all the paranoia? Why all the scare? Why? Which, what's he called? Co it's called SARS COVID 19 1.1.7. That's the, that's the number they've given it. Where do they get these numbers from? <laughs> Bloody hell! It's like they go to the Bible or take it out of the Bible. It comes from Gideon's. Oh, Gideon's 1.1. 1 .1. It's a sign. <laughs> but yeah, I yeah, I think um, virus put it to bed. I was going to say it's had its day or it's done its death, but it hasn't. It's going to run for a while. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, I'm not going down that way. Yes. Have a great Rizzle Day, a great New Year. From me, Gary Neal, and Starliner. Until next time. Until next time, guys. Watch the channel. Like, share, subscribe.